You know, Angelo, we know that you were one of the participants in the High Desert Heart Institute study that had 35 initial participants. Tell us a little bit about how you got involved in that study. In fact, maybe let's even go back a little bit and, and tell us a little bit about your health condition that led you to seek out the help of Dr. Siva and the High Desert Heart Institute. Well, ever since I come up here, I've, I've had heart problems, primarily starting out with atrial fibrillation, and then ultimately I required a pacemaker to be uh, put in. Um, what happened is in December, actually December 20th to be specific, of 2008, I had a, a renal failure, congestive heart failure, and pacemaker failure concurrently. The surgery was fine uh, after I got out of the hospital for the next five to six weeks. I was in the hospital about two to three days minimum every week as a result of congestive heart failure is basically was the real primary reason is that nothing was happening. I had been taking all the medications possible. I was medically managed to the maximum extent and finally I gave up. Quite honestly I'd had enough. I got weak. I was on oxygen 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I couldn't walk 15 feet without stopping. I couldn't even open up a bottle of water. My wife used to have to open the bottles of water for me. I was very concerned also with medical costs, and I was concerned that I didn't know what these bills were going to be because I hadn't received them yet, but I didn't want to empty the well out, so to speak, and, and I didn't want any good money spent after bad, if you will. So... Uh, I decided to take myself out of the hospital. I asked them to remove all the IVs, and they told me that if I went home, I would die. And I said, just give me the papers I need, and I'll go home, because if I'm going to die, that's where I want to be anyway. Well, on Monday, I mentioned that I was going to go to the congestive heart failure clinic. I went there, and Dan Austin, who is the clinical director there, and Dr. Siva recommended that I go on a study of a product called proarginine, which is a dietary supplement. Well, I was just a little bit set back that they'd been doing everything they could. I felt, you know, what are you going to do with a dietary supplement? And in all truthfulness, I didn't really think it was going to work, but they also told me they were going to do a tremendous amount of testing. Well, the testing really hit me because they said it was going to be free, and so I could see that the medical bills were not going to be rising, and so consequently I went ahead and said, let's do it, because I was more interested in seeing what was going to be happening to me, whether I had a week to live or seven days or two days. I, could, I was expecting things to go down, and I wanted to have access to all of that information. So I did what they said, and I, I went on to ProArginine, and uh, there were 35 people total. And uh, in a few short weeks, I began to actually feel better. I wasn't sure at that time whether I was feeling better or I was thinking I was feeling better. Yeah, yeah uh, but actually, I was feeling better. By the end of three months, I felt really pretty good. Uh, by the end of the third month, I was doing things that I hadn't been able to do for years. My wife is the one who told me that she believed that I had more energy than I ever had in my life. And I really thought that maybe she should go on pro-arginine too because I think she forgot our honeymoon because I knew I had more energy then. And here I am ready to go on a second honeymoon because of the pro-arginine. Tell us a little bit more about uh, some of the other people you associated with in the study. What kind, how serious were these people who were involved in the study? And were they handpicked because of certain situations, or were they all pretty much in a similar situation as you were? Well, they were, they were handpicked, but they were handpicked on the basis of they picked the, the worst people. There were 33 that I know of out of the 35 that were what I'm going to refer to as, my term is nearly deads, okay, including me. And uh, I got to meet the greater majority of them while we were there. 
and I could see that they were getting well in talking with them because I actually spent about four to five hours at the clinic once or twice a week getting all these tests done. And we've had people who were at the clinic who had legs that they were told by their own doctor to have to have it amputated. They did not have it amputated because they didn't want to. But after taking this study, not for the leg, but for the congestive heart failure, that leg is ended up looking great. It's good and doesn't require amputation. That's on one person. Another person was in there taking magnesium. They were there three times a week with getting IVs for magnesium because they couldn't get their magnesium level to the minimum required. They also had heart problems, but they were in there for this reason. The first thing they happened to notice was that the magnesium count was increasing. By the end of the three months, they were not using hardly any of the magnesium. The magnesium level had, had gotten back into the normal range, and the person was taking uh, magnesium tablets as well as IV medication direct. And there's no magnesium in the product. That's the interesting thing. So it obviously seems to be helping the absorption of the magnesium that people were getting otherwise. Well, from my engineering background, I figure that what it's doing is making the body operate more efficiently because magnesium is an element. It has to come from the food. And consequently, the body is then taking and, and processing that and providing more magnesium to the, to the body. Yes. What was the attitude among the clinical uh, participants as the weeks unfolded and they actually started feeling better and, like yourself, actually trying to grasp to a glimmer of hope that had not existed when you started the study? Well, they were all really pleased. I mean, especially we had one gentleman that was there. He was taking nitroglycerin, nitroglycerin tablets an average of about 16 per day for the uh, angina, I think it's called. And uh, at the end of the study, he was only taking one. So, and he's still on it. I've not had an opportunity to talk to him since, but, you know, the, the angina pains went down substantially. Um, I could just go on and on, but the attitude of the people was great. I mean, they were all feeling good or positive about life. It was terrific. Well, it's terrific to have you here.